there. Thanks so much for joining us to learn more about math tasks. This particular task that we're going to talk about is going to look at area and perimeter. My name is Shannon from Strategic Intervention Solutions and if you are new to math tasks make sure you check out on our website at sis the number four teachers.org our introductory video for how to integrate math tasks into your home or school. We're going to really be applying these eight math practices that you see at the bottom here or also known as the process standard. We want to go beyond just a typical story problem but really apply rigor in getting these deep thinking going on within math tasks to see if kids can apply their knowledge. Remember with tasks not everyone's going to have the right answer. Some people are going to be a novice, an apprentice, a practitioner, or an expert and that's okay. This task that we're going to talk about is called a vegetable garden. I have a picture here for my anticipatory set, but you also could do a video of gardens if you wanted to read a book about gardens. Um, but that idea as to why you might have a fence around the garden so that rabbits don't come and eat some of your um, precious plants that you've planted um, and kind of what goes into building a garden if you wanted to at your house. And so we try to keep the tasks as much in the real life of a student that you're working with that you may plan to build a garden in your yard and um, you know kind of how that would work. The task in this scenario says your neighbor wants you to help them create a vegetable garden. They have 50 feet of fencing and want to use all of it to make a rectangular shaped garden. What are some of the ways the garden could be set up? What are the dimensions that they could use to get the most space to grow their plants? Now, kids might think that that would be different, that space might be longer because they're going to reason that they're going to plant corn and corn needs, you know, kind of a linear way to grow. Some kids might want this, you know, garden to have the largest, you know, square footage in the center because maybe they're going to be growing squash and there's lots of vines that, that might have to go on. So kids, you know, might not have solved the task exactly the way that I did, but the idea is to look to see are they a novice, an apprentice, a practitioner, or an expert in their thinking. At the bottom here we kind of give a checklist to make sure kids are really drawing a picture and, and showing examples to support their explanation. They do need to give a written explanation to talk about why this way of building the garden might be the best way. Show an equation and obviously their number sense thinking and really ask themselves is their answer really reasonable um, and getting that multiple ways of solving it. Here's a way that's a sample of a possible way that somebody might have solved it. I kind of drew squares and I was sort of looking at maybe my justification for how I might want that garden to grow. Do I want it to be a 7 by 18, an 11 by 14? I and my justification that I would be writing would really be talking about that, you know, that perimeter would be using all 50 feet of the fencing. But in the inside, I've kind of done some calculations to figure out the square footage of the area of of that um, particular garden. You want kids to take this task how they think of it. Let them be creative in what they're looking at and how they're applying the mathematics to it. You're going to see right away that kids are going to try to, you know, try to add that 50 up in a certain way but not necessarily take the consideration of how to find, you know, area versus perimeter. And you want to see if they really can apply it. Did they just memorize the procedure that you taught them, you know, you do length times, you know, width and you get the this. Do they really understand understand what perimeter means versus area. A lot of things will come to fruition to see really the depth of the knowledge that the child has in something that's been taught. That's the whole idea here. So this might be more of an expert level or high practitioner, but you'll have kids that will solve this in different ways. And that's what you want to do is get them to do the deep thinking, not to put the pencil down, raise their hand and wait for someone to help scoop them up and be the giver of all the information. Let them kind of figure it out let them place different scenarios to apply their thinking and see what happens. We hope that you'll share with us how this went with your task and seeing how well kids can do with looking at fencing. You can also change the numbers to make it harder if you want. Um, join us on our website at sis4teachers.org where you can find all kinds of great resources that you can bring into your classroom or your home. Join us on any of our social media channels from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube or LinkedIn. You can join us on all at the handle at SIS, the number four teachers. Thanks so much for joining us.